Hello everyone and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of our staff and everyone helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so excited that you're joining with us on this fourth Sunday of Easter as we continue with our Easter celebrations for all people. It's just wonderful that you're here. If it is your first time joining with us at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, I especially want to welcome you. And I want to encourage you and everyone to use our contact form. It is pinned right in the comment section. Please use that. Fill it out. Place all of your contact information there, particularly your email address, so that we can get you our e-newsletter. Uh, we want to be able to connect with you and be able to uh, connect you in worship and online ministries and in-person ministries and opportunities for service. So please use that contact form. And please note that on there, there is a place for your prayer requests. Those go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. So make sure that you use that contact form today. I want to especially welcome to worship today the Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, who will be bringing our message today. Margaret Ann is no stranger to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, of course. She is the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, the social enterprise that has its home here at Douglas Avenue. So it's wonderful that we have Reverend Jessup here to lead us in worship in this way today. Now I want to remind you that when we do worship together online, we covenant together to be a blessing and to fully participate and what that means is when we covenant to participate that we're going to participate that whatever we're doing here in worship just go ahead and do it stand up and sing when we're singing when it's time to pray pray when it's time to listen listen when it's time to put in the comments put into the comment section and just fully participate we encourage you to close down other devices other distractions so that you can really focus maybe light a candle to help you focus and then just really engage in the worship and then the other thing that we covenant to do is to be a blessing. And that means that everything that we're doing together today, the way that we're in the comment section, the way we may be gathered with other people around our device or screen, uh, the way that we communicate with the entire world, that all of it is a blessing to everyone that is involved. As we continue into our time of worship, I invite you now to center yourself with a special offering of music by our Wesley Handbell Ringers. clouds. I'm Grant. I'm Marie. I'm Macy. I'm Paisley. Please join us in the call to worship and shout Alleluia with us. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it because Christ is risen. The Lord has is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. The Lord has risen indeed. Hallelujah! Join us in singing, Thine Be the Glory.
is Jill Gordon. I'm a member of the Trustees Committee at DAUMC and President of the United Methodist Women. Please join me in a spirit of prayer as I pray aloud our opening prayer. Merciful God, in this time of worship, open us to the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Give us the grace to love as you love. Give us the courage to protect and care for others, even when we are afraid. Grant us the strength to love in truth and action, even when loving this way challenges us. Awaken our curiosity and empathy, even when we tend to neglect the needs of others. Forgive us when our love is absent and show us how to offer our love with more than just words. Shepherd us in our loving and in our living that others may experience in us your goodness and mercy. Through your love and grace, we pray. Amen. Receive this assurance. The Holy Spirit abides in each of us, loving us, loving through us, forgiving us, forgiving through us. We are loved and forgiven as we love and forgive. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you now to share that same peace and love and forgiveness with one another, with everyone joining online by sharing the peace of Christ. You can say, peace be with you and respond and also with you, with those who are gathered with you, with me, with folks uh, in the comment section. And we're gonna share that right now with some special folks in our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. Hi, I'm Hannah, and my favorite thing about church is singing. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Marcia Stout, and I'm the keyboard player and one of the singers in the praise band here at DAUMC. I'm also on the welcome and inclusion team. Peace be with you. And also with you. My name is Dottie Burse. I'm the new accountant for Douglas Avenue, and I'm excited to be part of the team. So it's good to meet you all and peace be with you. Okay, everybody, it is time for small talk. So I would like the children who are with us in online worship to come in really close to your device and your screen so you can see everything and hear everything that goes on with small talk. Usually small talk is brought to us by Miss Laurie and Laud the Lamb, but they're having a little time off this week. So they're not gonna be doing small talk. I am. So here's the deal. When we have our reading from the Bible later on in worship, I want you to listen really, really carefully. It's Psalm 23, and in that it tells about how God is like a shepherd. Now, what's a shepherd, you might ask? Well, a shepherd is someone who takes care of sheep and really helps them when they get in trouble and make sure that they have everything they need, but really helps them when they get into trouble. So I want you to watch this video right now of a shepherd helping a sheep. I don't know about you, but I don't think that sheep should have gone back in that ditch. That didn't look like a good place to be. It wasn't a good move for that sheep. But you know, once I started thinking about it, I thought, you know what? I have been just like that sheep before. Sometimes I have just gone right back into the same kind of trouble that I had just gotten out of. Have any of you ever done that before? You know, gotten right back into the same kind of trouble you had just gotten out of? I'll bet you have. I bet lots of you have. I know I have. But you know, here's the great news. God loves us, and no matter how many times we get into trouble, God is always gonna help us get out of that trouble. God is right there to love us and take care of us, just like that great shepherd we saw that video of. So remember this week how much God loves you and is right there with you and is there to help you get out of trouble and even stay out of trouble. Thanks a lot, y'all. See you later. Please join us in singing Revelation Song.
sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Yeah. With all creation I sing praise to the words of me. Hello, my name is Ed Boer, longtime member of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Today's reading is one of the most beloved and recited passages of the Bible, Psalm 23. I will read the familiar King James Version. Let us open our hearts and minds to hear what God is saying to us in this reading. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible reading we have received today. What could be better on a Sunday morning than hearing Ed Boer recite the 23rd Psalm? Thank you, Ed. Um, my name is Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the pastor and the director of Wouldn't It Be Lovely and a dear friend and colleague um, and partner of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It is an honor to bring you the Word of God today. I just want to say, several years ago, I bought a butter braid from Aria Philbrook. And if you don't know what those are, um, they're often used in fundraisers and they come frozen and you take them out and you let them rise, you put them in your oven and they become these really flaky pastries full of cream cheese. When I bought them, I knew I was gonna save them for a special occasion, maybe Easter morning or Christmas morning when my family was at home. Well, I put them in the freezer at the nursery waiting for that special occasion. Well, last week, three years later, I found the butter braids in the freezer, and I'm certain that they are freezer burnt. So that lesson was, do not wait for a special occasion for something really special. Another story, my mom inherited a beautiful 12-piece place setting of china years ago, and as I grew up, they were in our china cabinet. We were not to touch them, and certainly not to use them, because they were gonna be used on a special occasion someday. I remember that they were really thin and you could see through them and they had little clovers on them and some gold on the edges. They, in my mom's eyes, were beautiful, only to be used for something special. Well, my mom has now passed away and I can sadly say that those china dishes are now in five cardboard boxes in the crawl space of my home and have never been used in our family. We should not have saved them for a special occasion someday. Many of us need a reminder that some of the best things in life are not to be saved just for special occasions and important occasions, but can give us life every single day. We need to examine what it is that we put away and only get out and take the love of that on special occasions. And I'm here to say that that is true of the 23rd Psalm. We shouldn't wait and hold it only to hear it and reflect on it and to be comforted at funerals or at the bedside of someone seriously ill. The 23rd Psalm is a psalm to be read and admired and carry you through each and every day. Please pray with me. Oh God, I am so grateful that you are our shepherd and that we are the sheep, that you are with us each and every day. Be with me, O oh God, as I deliver the sermon that you have placed on my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. In the church liturgical year, today is what is called Good Shepherd Sunday. Churches all over, all over the country will be hearing about the risen Christ as the Good Shepherd, that he is the one that laid his life down for us, the one that leads us and cares for us. 23rd Psalm is included in the readings for today, and Jesus would have known this passage well. For many, Psalm 23 is closely linked to funerals. It is a psalm full of comfort and promise, and I'm grateful for the comfort that it does offer people at funerals and at time of death and sickness. But today I'm going to convince you that, yes, the psalm is a balm of comfort at funerals, and we need to continue to use it in that way but it is so much more. Do not wait for a funeral to reflect on and allow this psalm to comfort and empower you. It is a psalm for all times. The 23rd Psalm is a promise that God is with us every phase of our life, in every circumstance, and for all of time. In the day-to-day, -day, in the darkest days, with our enemies, and for all time into eternity. First, the psalm reminds us that God is with us in the day-to-day, -day, every day, not just on important days. Listen to the first part of the psalm from the message translation. It says, God is my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You bedded me in lush meadows and let me rest. You find me quiet pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and you send me in the right direction. 
Psalm 23 describes God as being attentive to his flock, making sure that they have their naps. Isn't that great for all of us who love naps? That they have enough grass or food and water and walking us along the right path. This psalm reassures us that God takes care of everything that we need. King David is the presumed author of this psalm and is telling us that God is with us every day of our life. And if we allow it and we tend to our every need, he wants us even to take naps and to rest. I love that so much. Next, the psalm reminds us that God is with us in the darkest of days. It says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod thy, and thy staff, they comfort me. It is that line that makes Psalm 23 so important at funerals. When we're most emotionally raw, we are reminded that God is with us. When our souls are weary, we're reminded that God is with us. When you study this list, when you study um, this line further, the words, the valley of the shadow of death is one possible translation to that Hebrew word. But it points not only to death, but it can also be used as a metaphor for any heavy trial we experience, including death. Some of us are literally in the valley of the shadow of death, fighting for our life or fighting for healthy life, fighting for new life, or, or loving somebody that is. I thought a lot of people of color this week as they waited so anxiously for the, that important verdict that I believe that many of them were relying on God, that God was with them. How comforting to be reminded that God is with us when we're the most vulnerable. Wherever you are in life, God is with you. This Psalm reveals this promise and I know it to be true. As a cancer and hospice nurse, I have been with hundreds of people or with their family as they walk through this valley of the shadow of death. And more than any other place in my life, I have known God was present in so many dark valleys. Sometimes God was noticed in subtle ways, through the love of caregivers, through the medical team. And sometimes it was just wow that you could even breathe um, and feel the presence of God. You could just almost touch God in so many of those holy times at a bedside. I usually don't say this in sermons, but I will today. Just trust me that I have known God in mighty ways in dark valleys. Another point to make here is this. As Christians, we sometimes get confused about the promise God gave us. The promise was to be with us. The promise was not to fix our hard times, but to be with us through our hard times. God didn't promise to have a magic wand and make all things better, but a God that would walk through us through the dark times, promising us that we are not alone. Next, it says, Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup, runneth over. This line, I think, is so great. God's presence with us includes God's presence as we deal with our enemies. And in this psalm, God has prepared a feast and anointed our heads with oil, meaning a sign of blessing or honor. All the while, our enemies are looking on. God has shown us to be cherished and important, and our enemies get to see just how much God loves us. But on the other side of this is that our enemies are at that feast table, sitting down to a meal with us. It's hard to have enemies and be a Christian. Jesus said, love your enemies. And here God sets a table for us to sit along beside our enemies. As hard as it is, one of the hallmarks of our Christian spirituality and maturity is letting go of enemies. It's learning how to live with people that you do not especially like or people that have harmed you. And in this day, people that do not think like you. 
Our childish response often for people who we don't like is often to seek some sort of revenge, to get even or to lash back or to post something on Facebook, to hurt as we feel that we've been hurt. But our Christian faith leads us on a different path toward reconciliation, towards forgiveness, toward healing. This is only possible if we sit at the table with our enemies. Lastly, the psalm reminds us that God is with us in all time. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Think about that. The promise of eternal life here in the scripture right there, where we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm is a constant reminder that God's with us forever, now and for the time that we cannot conceptualize or we don't understand that time after death. We do not want to savor that assurance for a special or important day. Today is a day and every day is a day to thank God for that assurance of eternal life. We need to know and remember that God is with us in this time and the next. I love this psalm for all of these reasons. But what's more fascinating to me is that in the very middle of this psalm is the Hebrew word emmi, I-M-M-I, which means with. Sam Wells, a theologian and ethicist from Duke University, states that with is the most important theological word in the Bible. For example, Jesus is called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. His parting words in Matthew are, I am with you always. God is with us. God is not reaching down and rearranging things so we don't have darkness or sickness or death, but God is present with us in the midst of those things. Remember at the beginning of John's gospel, the word was with God. In other words, before even time began, before anything else, there was a with. And until the end of time, there is a with, as Jesus promised. Behold, I am with you always. With is the most fundamental thing about God. God is with us, and that is what the psalmist believed 3,000 years ago, what I believe, and what the psalmist believed then. My life experience, my teachings, my life mentors, and so many saints that came before me that helped form who I am, believed it, and now I believe it. Every day, God is with me, and God is with you. But here is a little depart from that. I say that God is with you. King Davis said, God is with us, and it is said throughout Scripture. And many of you know it too. And that's your truth and your hope. And that is a beautiful thing. But to everyone, it's not that easy. Or it, they don't seem to understand. One day at a Wouldn't It Be Lovely circle time, which for many is the church for some of the Wouldn't It Be Lovely women, we were talking about how God is with us. Just like the 23rd Psalm says, more than anything, I want the Wibble girls to know and believe that in their difficult life, God is right beside them. But this one particular day, one of the women said, I just don't get it. She continued on. I grew up in a Catholic school. I memorized all those prayers. I went to those special services, but then I got addicted to drugs for 14 years, and I lived day to day looking for the next fix. Are you saying that God was with me on the streets? Then she said, I am happier now than I have ever been. I'm leading a good life and I am clean, but for the life of me, I don't get the God thing. What are you telling me, that God is right here? Where was God when I had no place to live or had no food? I have never felt God. Her questions and her honesty took me back. There was not a pat answer for her questions or her confusion. But what God gave me to say at that moment was this. I asked her, do you believe that I am with you on this journey that you're on in your recovery and in your life? And she said, yes. Well, I said back to her, please know that I know God is with me. Without God being with me, I would have never quit nursing and started the program and stand here 
with you now. God is with me, so I believe that God is with you. But stay with me. God is with the people of Douglas Avenue, I told her. If God was not with them, inspiring them, opening up their hearts to new ways to do God's work in the world, they would have not been with me and said yes to start this program in our church. We would, um, we would not have had it. We believe that God was with Douglas, God is with me, and I am with you. And I continued on, that God is with the Illinois Great Rivers Conference, that their love for God and knowledge of God um, being with them allowed them to help initially fund this program and support Wouldn't It Be Lovely in the beginning. God was with them, and they are with Douglas Avenue. Douglas Avenue was with me, and I am with you. And I said one more thing, that God is with the generous people of this church, the volunteers, and Springfield. When we need furniture, it just shows up. When we are short money for payroll or we need funds, donations come. When we need volunteers and support, they're here. Because God is with them and moving them to be more like God. And they are with the church, and the church is with me, and I am with you. So God is with you. She finally said, I think I get it. I think. Faith is always a work in progress, but we stay at it and we keep supporting each other until we all get it and we live the best lives we can. That might not have been a perfect answer for her, but it's what I had at that moment. I think that kind of reasoning could also be applied to many of your lives. If you're having trouble knowing that God is with you, look around and see where God is with others that you love. Or think of those that came before you that you loved and had such a faith in God or God's love. The 23rd Psalm is a psalm of comfort for so many. And I think it's a comfort because it's full of the presence of God. It's a promise that God is with us in every phase of our life, in every circumstance, for all time, in the day-to-day -day living, in the dark valleys, beside and with our enemies, and for all time et into eternity. So, in conclusion, I say this. Eat the butter braid. Do not wait. Use the fancy china. Don't wait for a special occasion, and find delight and comfort in the 23rd Psalm. Don't wait for a funeral to absorb the goodness and the truth found in this scripture. Know that God is with you, and it is true, if you believe it or not. Amen. Please join us in singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
Hi, I'm Ellen Dixon, and I go to Douglas Avenue Church, and we're going to pray together today. Dear God, our God, we come to sit at your feet because you welcome us. I love seeing your smiling face and feeling your tender, reassuring touch. Thank you for our IEPs, Individual Education Plans. I appreciate our individual journeys that you have created. I appreciate when our journeys intersect like it does this morning, when we join in prayer for those who could use some encouragement. Help us to see that we are qualified to give this encouragement, to trust our words, our gestures, and our prayers, to be effective through the Holy Spirit as the driving force. We pray for those who are physically in need, for those whose spirits that may be dragging this morning or this week, for those whose spirits are soaring, please, we ask for peace and refreshing. We join in gratitude for answered prayers, for successes in new life. We have gratitude for all the ministries of Douglas Avenue. We jointly pray for Carol as she prepares to retire. Thank you for weaving her into our lives and the fabric of our church body. Hold our police and justice systems in your hands. Give us courage, not fear. Know in this quiet time, we lift our individual thoughts to God. Let's pray quietly. Thank you, our Savior and Redeemer. Amen. Now let's join together with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The abundant love of God that is available to each and every one of us flows out of us as well uh, in our abundant generosity and our giving. We are so grateful here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for your generosity, the way you have been giving of your financial gifts, the way you've been giving of yourself into ministry. We want to encourage you in that. We thank you for that. And we encourage you to continue to give those financial gifts. You can do that with our online giving portal. The link to that is pinned right in the comment section and it is available on our website as well. You can give through automatic giving. You can set that up with your financial institution or with ours. If you need assistance with that, just contact us in the church office. And then, of course, you can send in checks right to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Um, all of that giving is making a huge difference right now in what we're able to do in our online ministries, our in-person ministries, and all of the ways that we're able to serve in our community. I do want to just highlight a couple of these ways that you can put your faith into action right now. The next opportunity for vital conversations on race is this Monday, April 26th at 6.30 p.m. On your own, watch part one of the documentary, The Black Church, which is available on PBS, and then participate in small group discussion, learning and prayer with vital conversations as we seek to understand and dismantle systems of racism through continuing education, advocacy, and lifestyle changes. Now you'll need to sign up to receive the online link for the meetup on Monday. Links for that, to be able to sign up for that, are in the e-newsletter, or just contact the church office for assistance. Now, our Wouldn't It Be Lovely celebration is coming up this Saturday, May 1st, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., right here at the Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church facility. This is the five-year anniversary celebration, celebration of graduates and a parking lot sale that begins at 10 a.m. with a parade all around the facility. So bring your lawn chair, come at 10 a.m. to cheer on our graduates, and then stay as we continue to party in the parking lot. And then on Sunday, May 2nd, we are celebrating Carol Heron right here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church in a parking lot party from 2 to 4 p.m. Carol has served as our office administrator for over 30 years and she is retiring and we are celebrating her years of service and leadership and love for Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Again, that's here in the back parking lot of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for maximum safety. You can check out all of the information about that 
in the NEES newsletter. Again, please use that contact form and put the, your email in that so that we can get all of that information to you so that you can participate in all of these ways. And thank you, thank you for your generosity. Please join us in singing Christ is Alive. Christ is alive, let Christians sing His cross stands empty to the sky Let streets and homes with praises ring His love in death shall never die In every insult, rift and war so much for joining in this time of online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. We pray that this whole experience has been empowering, uplifting, meaningful for you, that you will continue to worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church online here on Facebook and on our YouTube channel, or join with us in person on Sundays at 8.15 for contemplative communion or at 11 a.m. for worship on the patio. We are so grateful to be able to connect with you and we hope that you will fill out that contact form, remembering to put your email address there because that'll be the best way we can get that e-newsletter to you with all of the information on ways to serve and participate and to grow in your faith. And to also remember that there's a place there for your prayer requests that go straight to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love you and long to be able to be in prayer with you, so please use that contact form. And now as you go into your day, Go knowing that God loves you entirely, that Jesus the Good Shepherd walks with you as you go in your life of faith, and that the Holy Spirit empowers and inspires you to live generously and fully and in love with everyone that you meet. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.